uh, this is Metal Show. Uh, my name is Jason J. Rock Houston. Of course, my co-host is Tom Collier, who is also the president of Fire Rock um, Music Group. And Tom, you're also the guitarist and principal songwriter of um, Hell Hostage. Our guest is, of course, Nick Z. Marino, the lead singer keyboardist from uh, the NZM band. And, and Nick, who do you have with you today? This is Dana Cooper, my guitar player for the last 10 years. He's um, um, 10 years or more. <laughs> no, it's been like it's exactly 10 a, it's years. Exactly 10 years. Yeah. So, so um, that's a great place to start. Could you guys share with how you first met and came together 10 years ago? Uh, you want to? You wanna... <laughs> I, I can. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. So, um, uh, so I was opening for the mighty NZM. I was playing in a different band called Requiem, actually, with our now drummer, Kevin. Was, oh really? Was the, I didn't know that. Was the drummer? Yeah. Oh god. So we were opening for the mighty Nick Z Marino band, and <laughs> we. He was nineteen years old at the time. May, the maybe, or just, I thought he was nineteen years old. Now he still looks young. <laughs> yeah. So, so we um we were playing at a venue here in Miami called Churchills, Churchill. and um we opened for them and you're kind of nervous to play for somebody like that, knowing that they're in the audience and stuff like that. So I played my ass off on guitar for this band Requiem. And after uh, the show, um, he, I was like walking out, taking my gear out or whatever. And he pulls up in his, his car and just so like gangster, like rolls down the window, which is a business card and just goes, <laughs> call me, you know, but, but I was so blown away by their show and everything. So, I never, I never thought much about it, um, but then uh, we got in touch. I think maybe a week later, yeah. and he asked me to to play bass, and I was like, no, <laughs> no, no, for the longest time. And then um, eventually needed a guitar player, and I was like, there's the phone call I was waiting for, and we've been together ever since. Correct. <laughs> okay, so so I, I love that staying true to who you are. Like, no, I'm not a bass player. I'm sticking to the guitar. <laughs> I knew I was the guitar player of this band. I just did. <laughs> okay, how, how about you, Tom? you have any questions for the guys? No, nothing for him. Actually, I got a lot of stuff. Well, Nick, I want to start off by saying that um, I talked to uh, the distribution company today, and you actually mm -hmm. have some, some of your, we've got a lot of pre-sales. I don't know how many yet, but we know that your vinyl has sold and your CDs are selling right now. We just don't know how many yet, but they they get, they just said stuff is going, stuff is being sold. So you got some pre Pre sales going, so congratulations on that. I'm very happy for you. Oh, I'm glad great. I get to see that tonight. So, and July 19th is going to be a big day. Are you excited about the release of the album worldwide? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, he, he just saw the album for the first time, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, he, really? He's blown away. It's so good. Yes. Yeah. Did he tell you I designed the <laughs> art cover for him? Yeah, we, we have it here. We have it here. <laughs> yeah. Great there job. Did he, tell you, did he tell you who did the artwork for him? I saw I saw the last it's, um the last Mark, interview. Is, yeah, the, the artwork is is sick. Yeah, yeah. Mark Lopes from Metal Church and Ross the Boss Band did that. There we go. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He's, that he's, was, he's the it's best. Awesome. I I literally just got it a moment ago. I can't wait to go through it. Yeah, it's great. We're excited about that, and uh, he's got some awesome. radio stuff going on. I mean, we we did some news. I mean, I'm I'm excited about this week's radio. What's going to happen? You're going to get a big bump when this releases on the 19th because the whole album goes to radio, not just the single. Right now, your yeah. single's at radio, so we're expecting. I mean, I I I'll be shocked if you don't hit the Billboard charts with this album. You know, we really that's how good it is. That's how good I feel about it. So, oh, oh, so Tom, that's good. at least at least a few of them on there are. <laughs> Are pretty damn good i think yeah especially the the you know there's there are the songs that that were released under nick marino solo records by india yeah. mouse 2010 so this is like kind of remake and he replayed the guitars it was actually a different guitar player he replayed the guitars and bass that's why it took a little bit longer you know so we did a, well, a little remake of the of the songs and, and i think it sounds much better now Oh, wow. I was talking with the radio. I was talking with the radio guy because I, I played with Sweet uh, two weeks ago. I was out with Sweet. They came to New York, so I I was their direct support act. And the radio guy was there, and we talked about you afterwards. And he said, "I, I expect a big bump once he gets that album released." He said, "Because I can send the whole thing off to radio." So, but anyways, go ahead, Jason. You were saying something. Yeah, that's interesting. That um, 
the fact that you know, I thought this was like a, a best of where just kind of, kind of like a greatest hits collection of everything you put out, which it is. But the, the fact that they're new recordings, that's kind of interesting. Talk about the decision to do that. Yeah, that's uh, that's exactly um, what I what I told Tom. You know, when when they offer, I I, I could just you know um, release them as as they are but I, I when i when i listen carefully i said okay i want to do a little change here and there you know um so there's like how many songs with it five six or seven Something. with a little remake you know like like want to put like a little bit i didn't like the the guitar i want to do you know i basically i didn't touch the drums or vocals there was just like a little touch-ups you know it's like almost like a painting that you want to mm -hmm. you know but yeah. it's 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 also like closer to how we do it live you know what I mean? Like yeah. You when you have like a um, a recording and stuff over ten years or something, it it kind of changes when you do it in front of an audience, um, especially with uh, different musicians and stuff like that. So you we kind of wanted it to be more or less what we sound like now, as opposed to just re-releasing recordings. That's cool, and, and yeah. I, I was curious, yeah. like with doing that. Um, do you take uh, do you take down like the older versions of the songs you know off of different streaming services or are those left up as well? Like you got different versions. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, well, um, the the older versions, um, like I said, I you know the older version is nothing wrong with it. I just uh, first thing that it was it was a different guitar player For and sure. it's, the style didn't didn't really didn't match what we are doing now that's from that point of view you know that that's why i needed i needed to change the guitars to to, to make it you know yeah, as yeah. the of today yeah 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 well that, that that's cool because i don't think people kind of realize all that goes into that you know um the fact that sometimes for even legal reasons you have to go back and re-record the stuff and it's, it's cool that you can update it and have the version that you want to have out now not necessarily for us. We kind of do everything how we want to do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, it's... I, I guess it makes sense to, like Nick said, you know, this is a band now, and it makes sense to want to do with the guys that are in the band now, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, at least, I mean, at least for the last 10 years, Nick and I have been the... The, the, the toxic the core. of the group, you know? Yeah, what I mean? the, so the we, core of it. We've, yeah. we've been doing almost everything ourselves for... Since I since I joined at least, you know, um, but we've gone through members and stuff like that. And a, a lot of which are, are still on recordings today. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But as far as what we wanted to put out there, we wanted it to be as authentic as possible with what we sound like currently. Mm -hmm. cool. You know, Nick, um, you often hear people say, which I totally disagree with this statement, you know, keyboards suck and rock music, but I, I, I say this, I say, there's John Lord, there's Derek Sherinian, and then, then there's Nick D. Marino. Now, I, I was curious, um, how did you first start playing, you know, the piano, the keyboard, and, and, and choose that as your instrument of choice? Can't wait to hear this. Uh, well, uh, actually, uh, when I was a kid, I was I, I was singing first. Okay. But then I went to the, yeah, the classical musical uh, music school. I, you, I, I started playing piano. You know, and uh, classical music, and of course, that was my instrument. And and you know, I I, I learned later a little bit of guitar, but uh, um, basically, I was in, you just mentioned John Lord. That's exactly who I was was my idol. I was inspired by by the organ sound. Mo most sure. of it, I didn't like piano to be honest with you. It's just like I'm an organ, yeah. Consider myself keyboard player or organ player. I'm not really a piano player. You know, I got you. Okay, it, it, yeah. Yeah. And th th that 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 instrument is just magical to me, you know. And that's that's how I started. Then later on, we had. A, I remember when I was like 14, 15 years old, and it, it was all, all instru instrumentals, you know, band. There was a guitar player, bass player, drummer, and and me on keyboard. So that uh, nobody wanted to sing. It was like, oh come on, was, you know, there's like. And then at one point, hey, somebody needs to sing. And then I, well, I used to sing before, and then I start singing oh, as wow. well. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. The guy can do it all. Now, now Tom, um, I was curious, um, you know, the, the No Innocence video, that's been getting great reaction. Um, and that probably, um, people are still checking that out. But um, being the record company president, what's the chances that we're going to get another video from NVM Band? 
Well, I, I'm sure Nick's going to do more videos. We've talked to him about that. And I'll tell you, Nick has got some great ballads too. This is this album's a fantastic album. He's got some other music that didn't we didn't have enough room for it. <laughs> we should have done like a double album for this guy. I mean, he's got some great, great songs out through there. And uh, I'm sure Nick, are you going to be doing more videos? We talked a little bit about that. I we already have one one video That's ready. You know, so the record comes out comes out. We'll uh, and it's the song that we actually co-write together. It's the end of days. You know, the video is already done and it's going to be posted, you know, in a matter of weeks or, or months, you know, after after the record is released. Yep, absolutely. Oh, of course. I want to talk about, the, go ahead. I just want to ask, what, what did you use to get, what, uh, what's your guitar rig? Because I'm, I'm a guitar player, singer myself. What what do you use for recording and playing live? Are they different, two different things? Are they Marshall. the same? Marshall, Marshall, that's me. What kind of guitar? I have my own handmade custom um, done by Ensworth Guitars in Nashville, Tennessee, um, which is all built from reclaimed wood from like historical buildings and stuff. So what I, what I have, the purple one that you probably see a lot is uh, an Ensworth guitar built from um, the very first John Deere factory ever in Wilson County, Tennessee from like 1890. So it's like a piece of the ceiling joist for, uh, from that turned into a guitar and I designed everything myself. And um, the volume knob goes to 11, literally. <laughs> yes, yeah. literally. Yeah, we all know that. Now, uh, yeah. what's the plan for taking the show on the road, you guys? Oh, yes, um, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we have something from, from Tom in California, I think, in January. Uh, we have a, a few local shows in, in, um, in Florida. And then next year, uh, it looks like we're going to go to Italy. And uh, there is a possibility to uh, open up a um, big U.S. store, but I don't want to mention. I got you. you. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't want to mention, mention which name, but one of the, the biggest names in the oh. rock industry. I know who it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, I don't want to explain because, you know. It's I'm, huge. It's, it's huge. It's and, it's if it, you know, but I, until it happens, if it's, you know, until, until it's real, I don't want to. Can't say anything. Until everything's yeah. signed and, and sealed and delivered, right? Uh, yeah, we, I, I'm just a little bit superstitious to, you know, um, to announce something that is not. I'm not, uh, I'm not superstitious, but I am, however, a little stitious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so yes. uh, as a guitar player, I was curious, um, do you solo a lot during the, during the shows or? Um, do I, do I solo a lot? Like, you know, like, you know, back in the day, you know, every band had a guitar hero when we were growing up, probably. At least when I was growing up. And, you know, that was a thing back in the day. And then, and then later on, people were like, oh, you know, we don't believe in soloing, you know. <laughs> well, let me let me ask you, is there a lot of solos in the, in the record? <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I think there is, but that's why I'm asking, you know, like. When we play live, imagine that times 10. Oh, okay. Okay. That's all we do. We the songs are basically roadmaps for us to just yeah. trade back and forth. You know, yeah. like the, our our live show is drastically different than than anything. Like we sit there and just jam the songs, and if that takes fifteen minutes to to get out what we have to say, then so be it. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, Nick, you brought up Deep Purple. That's one of my all time favorite bands from back in the day. And you know, one thing I love about Deep Purple, if you ever seen them live, is especially the um, classic lineup with Blackmore, you know, you could go see them live and they would jam out to one song like for 30 for, minutes. For so nothing like, nothing like, uh, you know, if you want to stay home and I heard Richie Blackmore said, if you want to stay home, you can put on the record, but if you want to go see a live, it's going to be some, a different thing. You know? Yeah. I just, I just saw yeah. them maybe a year ago and was apps and it was like primarily, um, the the original dudes like they they all had like white hair and you could yeah, just yeah, 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 the yeah. original well, singer drummer um yeah. bass but i think it was everybody except that for guitar player yeah, yeah. And I, I, I was blown away by yeah, how long they just I, I saw i saw the band um here in hollywood um i think 2018 but in 2009 i was actually i had a privilege i was uh touring with ingrid malstein and and uh we open up for Deep Purple, entire tour in Japan. Wow. <laughs> so the first time, we, we hung out in the dressing room, the, the same hotels, bullet train and everything. So I I, I, I was, I became friends with uh, Ian Pace and Roger Glover. Um, uh, however, uh, Ian Gillen was like, you know, he's like, hello, and that's it, he will go to his room, you know, he wasn't really. 
kind of a loner, yeah. Right here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but everybody else and um um and the last night in Tokyo, John Lord was still alive. So he flew from, from London and straight to to Tokyo and play a few songs. And uh and and I have even a picture with him, and it was just amazing. So that amazing cool to meet your hero like that, you know, Nick, and yeah, a picture and some hey, I met the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going that basically they they are, I would I would say they're fathers of heavy metal, you know. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the I would, I would one of them. Yeah, I would uh, I would say Black Sabbath and Deep Purple, yeah. like Deep Purple probably more like a progressive rock, whatever, you know. I mean, yeah, even if you go back to like the very early Deep Purple stuff, you know, um, like they had another singer before Ian Gill. Um, it, it, they were just kind of finding their roots, and you know, it, 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 and it kind of progressed. You know, more uh, once Ian Gillen came into the band. Oh yeah, Ian Gillen invented the the high pitch scream, screams and everything. You know, when he came, it was like a, you know, co yeah. completely he changed the game. Oh, sure. I think it was 1968 or 69 when he joined the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of it. crazy when you think about it, though. Like the music yeah. they were putting out that long ago and how it, yeah, it just still is epic. <laughs> I know, I know, and 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 some some of the recordings they. They still sound incredible. I I, I listened recently something from 1967. Some it's all you know, it's all analog and it sound yeah. the mix technically sounds better than anything I heard today. This is amazing, you know. Yeah, I mean that's why you put records from you know back in the 1970s and that, and you can tell the sonic sound of everybody being in the same room together and you know, and it really is a different sound. When it's analog like that, man, you can literally hear where they're standing in the room. Yeah, As he, a, you know what I mean. I I recorded. He recorded in Tennessee. Tell yeah, about I, it. I like, had I had recorded um some of my own stuff, um and I absolutely had to do it analog. And you really have to um hire some of the best musicians, uh in the world to to actually get that because it's not like you can just okay we're gonna go back and just delete that try again. You know what I mean? Like you have to get it. Yeah. So, yeah. But um. As when you hear the recordings back and everything, especially when it's mixed, you're just like, I could, I could hear where everybody is standing yeah, yeah. in the room as a, as opposed to where everything, yeah. oh, the mics are and everything like that. So yeah. it's it's such a real experience. The only, the only, the only problem, yeah, it's it's, it's great, but the, the problem is of editing and mixing takes a lot. You, you got to know your shit. You know, <laughs> a, lot, a lot more time then, and that's why everybody, you know, Doing the shortcut with Pro Tools. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's getting now, close. Let me, ask you, getting let me ask you guys, when you went in and re recorded these tracks for the best of, it's coming out July 19th. Um, did you did you produce the stuff yourself? Did you have another producer come in and produce the tracks? No, we basically produced it our, ourselves. Yeah, yeah, completely. I just I just uh, send uh, um, the tracks to to be mixed and mastered to Keith Rose, mm -hmm. who was a uh, um, sound engineering criteria. And did uh, many records for Ingve and also uh, one record for um, um, Robert Plant and Jimmy Page when they were in Miami. So he was mixing that record too. So, but other other than that, the the the, the production, you know, everything it's it's done here. So basically, he just had to put pieces together. And also, I was the you know assisting him on the mixing as well. You know, wow. but but. But that's the final result. Is uh, you know, I'm I'm very happy. And it, how hard is that to be like very uh, you know, being that you're producing the stuff yourself? These are songs that you wrote and you created. Um, is it any more difficult than if you were producing, um, uh, you know, some other band that you weren't in? That's a good question too. Well, well, you have you know, you stick to your, you know, your instincts and. Yeah. You know, when I when I'm producing, I, I actually you know produce a lot of people. Oh, they come to yeah. one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have a lot of clients, and and then you readjust even different type of musics, anything right. like pop, rock, R and B, you name it. You know, uh, classical. You know, um, what else? I, I don't I don't even know. So so you just switch to that mode, and you know you listen to something as a reference and. And just, but but the basic things like you know the the balance between uh, singing and uh, instruments, sure. you know, 
the drums has to be the same, you know. So yeah, different kinds of music calls for like different kind of production. Yeah. Well, and I, well, you know, um, I'm pretty impressed, Tom. We've yeah. learned quite a bit about um, Nick Z Marino today. I mean, a lot more than we previously knew. Um, and and I, Nick, I, I really think it's cool that uh, a lot of guys will, um, you know, get into doing other things like producing other bands and stuff, like you said. But they pigeonhole themselves. Oh, I'm just a metal guy. I, I dig the fact that you're willing to go in there and produce different types of music because for one thing it, it it helps you become a more better musician i would think working with different types of artists right absolutely yeah how about you tom um i mean what um what's the feedback you've been getting from people like in regards to the mzm i mean the, the album's not even out but you know the, the video has been getting a great response from what, I, what i'm seeing yeah that. the single's fantastic i mean the single's getting a great response uh, the best response I got was from the radio guy who's been in business for 30 years. I mean, he came to my show and says, I want to talk to you about Nick, about yeah. NZM. So he took me aside and said, well, let me play my show first and we'll talk afterwards, you know. But he was right there up front. He's a great guy. But I want to go back to the analog stuff. I actually, two-inch tapes and stuff, I have a, on my new record, I just converted a two-inch tape because we had to have it baked, you know. It was really old. It was from back in the <laughs> 80s. A good friend of mine was a rock star and he actually died. And it was the last thing he recorded with me, the drums. We just brought it up. So it's going to be the title cut to my new album and stuff called Rescue Me. But, That's incredible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we're. Bring, I talked to his family. They were so excited. I went to him. I said, hey, you know, he's been dead 20 years. This was the last thing he did with anybody was with me. We recorded six songs. So two songs are going on this album, two songs on the next album, and two more on the last album, the third oh, album. You're That's, already <laughs> Wait, <hell> oh, <laughs> That's a beautiful yeah, thing that you're doing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I want. I just want to honor him and his family and stuff like that. And it'll be announced when we put the record out. I think people are going to be surprised. Oh, we're bringing honor back, honor is know. an understatement, man. Like when you when you're a recording artist, do you ever really pass away? No. All you got to do is hit play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Play absolutely. forever. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And I and I produce my own stuff too, and I produce other bands too, Nick. And that's just a great experience to me. I love producing my own records. I had a producer come in and he changed the sound of everything. So I had to go back in. I paid him, fired him. And I went back in and I redid the album, both albums myself. And they came out and they both charted on billboards. I mean, they went, they sold tens of thousands of copies. I'm pretty proud of them. Now other bands come to me all the time. I love that. So I love the fact that you're producing different types of bands too, Nick. That's great. Yeah, I, I know. It, it just happened to me. Uh, I... A couple of years, five years ago, I, I sent a song for, for mixing and, you know, basically producing, you know, I just have the raw files to the guy mm -hmm. from, uh, I don't want to mention the name again, because yeah, yeah, from yeah. All, apparently the guy's like number one bands and whatever. And and when I got a result, I was like so disappointed. And, and I said, sorry, you know, and the I same thing, I paid, I, I paid him. I said, OK, here's the. Here's the money, you know, but I'm not using this. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing when you lose your sound. You got you got to have a recognizable sound, and you can tell that in the NZM. I love the sound you guys have. That's what I, the band's got to take on their own sound and create their own stuff. You're not trying to sound like anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. Final, final thing I'll say, guys, is in regards to the best stuff. I think it's a great way to kind of um, you know, relaunch a band because. There are people that have never heard of this band. They're hearing about it for the first time. You guys are starting to make some serious noise. And it, it's a, a good way for people to kind of really familiarize themselves with, with your um, back catalog, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny. That's like the best stuff. And it's just a learning about us now. But yeah. but that's okay. <laughs> Whatever works, right? And and um, and hopefully that there will be a new um, studio album, you know, next year or whatever, uh, right around the corner. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna call. We're gonna help them name that one. The next one's gonna be called "The Best Is Yet to Come." <laughs> <laughs> the best, the best yet. Yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely. Yeah. No, dude, we're we're always making music, Nick and I. Yeah. And you never know. He he comes to my house and just plays the riff or something. I like listen to this. And I, and let's go and just record it. You know, you, you just do the little verse, chorus. And then you build, and then just leave it like that. And then a few days later, and we, then we change the arrangement of this, but the the, the basic stuff. We, then we do the solo. Dude, and we haven't we haven't put out an album yet, at least together, that didn't have thirty five songs, of which <laughs> like twelve or fifteen make it. You know, yeah. or however many. But like every single album that you have heard has had like 
30 possibilities of what's going to be on it. I, I love I like that. To. Or is always better. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. I forget the which maybe, maybe some of which you'll hear on the, the albums to come. Yeah, I, on what like, like, you know, you know, I honestly, I could just go to the library and, and pick up the songs and just, it Good needs God. to be yeah. uh, replayed and, you know, and then uh, reproduced. But other than that, I, I have already the, you know, the whole um, library ready. Well, I, I got a prediction for you guys, um, Tom. Um, MGM, um, future fire rock legendary artist, okay? <laughs> Love it. Love it. Uh, you guys, thanks for coming yeah, on the show today. For, thanks again to Tom and, and, and Michael Wilkinson, who is, who is not here, who, who actually found me uh, on yeah. a Facebook, and he, he uh, recommended to Tom, and I really appreciate what Tom is doing and and, uh, and the Fire Rock, and uh, uh, we're excited, uh, you know, and I can't wait for the record to come out and, and to start playing live. Yeah, we'll definitely have you guys back on. Um, it looks like this is going to premiere around August 6th. If that changes, we'll let you know, but feel free to share it when it posts. Hey, hey, um, Jason, why, why don't we put this on before the 19th? Can we get it on before then? We, we let's got get it on. We'll, we'll, talk talk to, uh, we'll talk to yeah. um, Lathan. He can get it up. Yeah, let's, let's get it on before their album releases. That's great. Okay, yeah, we will definitely do that. You, you know, you guys have a, Tom's, got, yeah. Tom's got a lot of pull here, so anything for him. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you guys so much, man. With me talking. Okay. Very thank you. Thank this was, you. This was, it was absolutely it was awesome. Yeah. So much fun. Okay. So, we talk, we will, will you let me that. know when, when it's going to be? Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll It'll we'll be that. up before the 19th. It'll be up before the 19th. Definitely. Okay, yeah. yeah. All okay. Right. For sure, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Okay.